Oh, hey there, this is Dr. Evan Osar. Hope you're having a great week. Happy Thursday evening. Doing a Facebook Live. This is the first time I've done a late Facebook Live. I think maybe ever, <laughs> maybe, maybe not. Welcome, thanks for being part of our community. Welcome to Integrative Movement Insider. If you were part of the Idea World Convention last week, welcome as well. It's a great, great event. So many great individuals, so many great, so much great feedback about our sessions on the glutes and breathing, and more importantly, like fitness professionals who are really making a difference in their clients' lives, like transforming lives, really. So many people shared great stories of things that they've been doing with their clients and ways to take the information we were sharing into their clients' programs to create even more changes with their clients. One of the things that you're gonna see with your clients as it relates to the, one of our topics, the glutes, is knee osteoarthritis. And again, it's the knee is the biggest joint in the body, it's the biggest synovial joint, I should say, actually the biggest joint and, and synovial joint. At that, it's the most replaced joint in the body as well. And it's the most common, one of the most common places for osteoarthritis. So many of our older clients, and again, older is relative, at 53, I probably have a little knee osteoarthritis as well. However, my knees don't bother me too much. However, you have many clients that do have knee problems. And there's lots of strategies out there, lots of exercises. So I want to share one super simple release using the activator by Rolga. Thanks to my good buddy, Rusty, and his wife, Dana, our connection for the activator. We don't make any money by telling you this. I just use this tool because you have this nice smooth surface here. It's great for myofascial release around the knee. But again, do it very gently. I'm going to share with you a very simple strategy to address one of the most common causes of knee osteoarthritis and that sort of valgus knee position. One of the things I want to talk about also, I'll show you a quick, easy progression as well. One of the things I want to just share with you very quickly before we get into the exercises. And you know, a lot of people will say, hey, Dr. Oso, you shouldn't talk so much in the beginning of your videos. Just get to the exercises. But here's the, here's the thing. You know, at the conference, <laughs> this is exactly what they're talking about. <laughs> at the conference, these couple of awesome ladies, so I, I forget their names and I apologize for that. These two awesome ladies came up and said, after the glute session, hey, thank you so much for that session. That was really awesome. And I, I wanna thank you for helping us think outside the box. And I'm like, I really appreciate the comment. I'm gonna clarify one thing you said. I really helped you think inside the box because this is the information that we should have been taught. It's really training 101. It just sounds different and it sounds you know, way unconventional, con unconventional in the industry because everybody else is trying to think, make things so much out of the box that we sort of forget or we never learn the fundamentals, how the knee is aligned or how the hip is aligned what creates optimal biomechanics and motor control around the hip and or knee. So that's basically what I was sharing with them and how many of the things that you and I have been taught, I've been taught the same exact things that you have been taught. I just messed so many people up that I'm like, hmm, there's gotta be a different way. That's really what put me on this path and I was blessed or I've been blessed to study with some amazing people in the world, especially up in Canada, that really changed my mind about how to think about alignment and control and how to train alignment and control and progress clients. So again, I'm not smarter than you. I don't have more exercises than you. I just have a different perspective because I can, I can get my hands on clients. I can do manual therapy work. I can really assess to see and feel. It really is feeling to determine if joints are moving in the right way. So when we think about now the knee valgus position, we've been taught, taught oh, you must have to strengthen the abductors and, and release the adductors. And perhaps that's true for a small minority of your clients, but that's not what's driving most of your clients' knee valgus positions. So there's really three priorities, just more than this, but just to simplify the three prior priorities of your nervous system. Number one is breathing. Respiration is the number one thing that your, uh, your nervous system is responsible for and focused on. Because again, if you're not using an optimal strategy, it's gonna change your posture, change your alignment, change your control strategy to ensure that you're meeting the physiological demands related to breathing. Number two, eyes level to the horizon, the writing reflex, they, and all those reflexes, the vestibular reflex and the cranial cervical reflexes, all those reflexes, cranial ocular reflexes, all those reflexes associated with keeping those eyes level to the horizon. So if you have some rotation and or side bend, well now you're gonna start to adjust the rest of your body to keep the eyes level to the horizon because that's where we get 
50% of our proprioceptive, or I should say not proprioceptive, but information that comes into our central nervous system about our orientation to the ground, which is where we are most of the time, oriented to, to the ground, that's where 50% of our, our information comes in. So we'll adjust around to keep those eyes level to the horizon. Third thing, center of mass over base of support. So again, if you have a tight shoulder on one side and you really pull down because maybe you have shoulder pain, tightness, whatever, you, something's driving your, th your shoulder down, it can drive your thorax that direction. Well, now your center of mass has shifted this direction. Well, you will do something to shift your center of mass so it gets back over your feet. Well, if this shoulder stays tight, well, one easy way to, to get your center of mass back between your feet is to drive that knee in. Okay, so that knee will drive in. So again, that valgus knee problem isn't just because they have tight adductors or weak abductors, it's what's being driven up here from a shift in their torso, a compression on one side or the other. So when we look at clients with knee, hip, knee, and or foot issues, we're always looking at where the rib cage is, where the head and neck are, because that's what's determining, or partly determining, where the center of mass is between the feet. Now, let's just leave that out of this conversation, but that's where a lot of this valgus position is coming from. Now just say we've, you know, we've ruled that out or we've addressed that issue. Now we have to address the specific valgus knee issue. Now some clients will have weakness of their hip abductors, but again, it's not always a weakness. It's actually an inability to actually access, access, <laughs> access their hip abductors, to actually get the hip in the position so their hip abductors, I should say hip and pelvis, in a position that they can actually use and load their hip abductors appropriately because one of the muscles that we rarely think about is your biceps femoris that actually attaches to the fibular head. So we don't often think of that muscle causing this valgus knee position. But when it is short, it will externally rotate the tibia and it will also laterally compress your knee. And that's exactly the valgus knee position, external rotation of the tibia, internal rotation of the femur, and actually that sort of rotation of the pelvis because of where the hamstring, the biceps femur specifically, inserts on the issue of tuberosity down to the fibular head. So that's why this little tool comes in so handy. So what we often will need to do, again, you have to be super careful. Again, if you, if you have manual therapy skills, I would actually get and do manual therapy with, with my thumbs just because it's softer, easier, I can adjust pressure a lot easier. If I don't have manual therapy skills, you can teach your client how to use this activator and use that smooth edge. And again, I'm gonna go right inside the joint line. So the joint line is right where the knee joint, the femur, joins into the tibia. So you can kind of feel that joint line if you feel, so if you go to like sort of the, the bottom of your patella, put your fingers in that groove and slide around, that's your joint line. What happens is the ligaments, the lateral collateral ligaments, don't worry about the names of them. We're gonna cover them this weekend in our Two Anatomy Geeks course. The lateral collateral ligament, the joint capsule that surrounds your knee, the outside of the joint capsule becomes short and tight. Then you stretch out, again, now you stretch out the medial collateral ligament, that ligament that runs up and down your knee this direction. And you stretch out the medial joint capsule. So you need to release those structures, otherwise you won't get the knee back in a more optimal position. So again, use the activator, go slow, go lightly. So you can just do, just relax the knee, keep the knee nice and relaxed, and just go very gently along that joint line. Again, super, super light. You don't need a lot of pressure. Again, you could use more pressure, but don't use more pressure because you don't need it. Just use a little bit of pressure. And again, I'm just taking the activator and just going up and down very slow. I should say not up and down, but across the joint line, very, very, very gently. Now, I would take it right below, so again, here's the bottom of the patella or the kneecap. I'm gonna go just below that as well, and just do very, 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 very gentle. And again, if it's super painful, then just don't do it, it's okay. You can just use your fingers or have your client use their fingers and just go very gently. Just get a little bit of blood flow, a little bit of mobilization of that fascia that connects from your quads, from the tibialis anterior, from the lateral retinaculum of the knee as well. You can go right above the kneecap. So here's the top of the kneecap here. Just go right in that little groove there. You can actually get in here and just release some of that biceps femoris. Now obviously we do some release in the hip. We do some release along the biceps femoris on the foam roller. I've shown that in previous videos as well. Just some nice easy way to just lightly start to work the mechanal receptors because one of the things you're like, well, should we, we release ligaments and joint capsules? Well, the ligaments and joint capsules provide a lot of proprioceptive information back to the central nervous system. So we can use this tool or use our fingers just to stimulate the mechanal receptors. Because again, you don't need a lot of pressure to actually release the joint capsule 
and or some of that lateral fascia that's, that's bound up and tight there. Now, once you've done that, you also just need to teach the client how to do some mobilization of that, or should say lengthening of that. So again, with a client that has a valgus knee with that external tibial rotation, that internal rotation of the femur and or pelvis, you want to teach the client how to get the pelvis back. And if you watch my knee, when I get the pelvis centered where it belongs and the femoral head centered in the socket where it belongs, it actually brings the tibia back where it belongs as well. So one of the things we'll do, I'll have a client sit here. I'm gonna sit so my leg is sort of supported, but a little bit higher so I can get some range of motion. I'm gonna sit the hip back in the socket to the best of my ability, and then I'm going to just work on just straightening and creating internal rotation of that tibia. Because again, the tibia is externally rotated because of the biceps femoris. So we wanna activate the medial hamstrings and the muscle, the popliteus muscle, that muscle that runs across the back of the knee. So again, it's sit the hip into the socket and then straighten the knee. You can do it from here as well. So same, same idea, just sit at the edge on the sit bones and just straighten the knee and just work on internal rotation. So flip around. So it's here, sit the hip in the socket and then just work on straightening with a bit of internal rotation. Try to keep the hip flexors relaxed even though they're gonna work a little tiny bit, focus more on keeping the hip centered in the socket and that internal rotation. And just do that a few times. And for me, I need to do this because I, my, I tend to have a bit of this sort of valgus position with a little bit of external tibial rotation. So again, just that little bit of work, actually just, I can get my foot down on the inside of my foot and I can get my pelvis to sit more squared up to my foot. So already a great position or improvement in position for me. And now from here, you can do a couple different things. You could take something, I'll use this, I would actually use a yoga block, put a yoga block between here and then straighten my feet out. So now I'm getting a bit of internal hip rotation. And now I'm just gonna do some just hip hinges. So that way I'm working on the foot tripod, I'm working on the internal rotation of the tibia, and now I can work on also hip hinging. So a great way to unload the knee, relatively speaking, because you're not bending, bending the knee, relatively speaking, and then use the posterior hip complex. So that way you're teaching the client how to align their hip, knee, ankle, and foot, that foot tripod, and then you're teaching them how to use hinge and how to use that posterior hip complex. So that's just one version. We'll generally teach our clients, progress our clients to then doing a split stance. So that way they're doing a split stance hip hinge. And again, it's the same idea of keeping the hip, knee, ankle, and foot tripod aligned, keeping the pelvis square to that forward leg, making sure the client is not allowing that knee to rotate, the femur to rotate in and or the tibia to rotate out. So again, square up, foot tripod, align over top, and then hinge. Great way to retrain without putting a lot of load through the knee. And if your client can, I would do some even sit to stands. So it's the same idea of aligning, nice and tall, align, hinge. Again, keep the hip, knee, ankle, and foot aligned. You can sit all the way down. You can elevate it for clients that can't get down so deep. Not every client will be able to do that, so then stick with more of your hip dominant patterns like your stiff legged deadlifts, like your hinges, like your bridge type patterns. But again, you're still working on getting your clients to align their feet, align that hip, knee, ankle, and foot, so that you're teaching the internal rotators of that knee how to balance out that biceps femurs and then how to square that pelvis up to that as well. So just a real quick way of thinking about how to look at your client with valgus knee, how to use just a little bit of myofascial release. Again, always be safe, always work within your scope of practice. Don't do anything that's not within your scope of practice. Many times you'll need a manual therap therapist, like a chiropractor, like a physical therapist, like a mas trained massage therapist that can help you with some of the soft tissue work. For clients that have a real degenerated knee, we'll often need to do just a little bit of traction of the femur between the femur and tibia, do a little bit more soft tissue work to get a little bit of, of decompression of that joint before we start training it. But again, we know the strategy works is exactly what we use in our, in our clinic with our clients. And we've actually been able to help a lot of clients avoid knee surgery, help them if they've had things like PRP and or pro, you know, uh, stem cells and prolotherapy and those types of therapeutics to help improve the tissue quality. It actually helps them 
recuperate better and progress better from those therapies when we help them align and control their joints. And it helps us with our clients that have knee replacements and then also need that sort of post rehab training to get them back their quality of life and progress them to achieving their health and fitness goals. And that's how you become that go-to specialist for your current clients and attract more individuals that need, want, and will pay you for your expertise. Hope you enjoyed that. Hope it made sense. If you're looking for more information today, today, Thursday, today is Thursday. Yes, it is Thursday, Saturday. We've got part three of a three part series of two anatomy geeks. So we covered synovial joints, the hip and the knee talked about osteoarthritic changes of the hip in parts one and part two. We talked about some corrective exercises for the hip in part two. This week, we're going into the knee, discussing more of the knee anatomy, the meniscus, the joint capsule, as well as the corrective exercises, building upon what I just shared with you here, showing you more specific corrective exercises. But again, it's really similar to this approach that I just shared with you right here. Just showing you different ways to activate the internal rotators, different ways to align your client, and different ways to communicate to your client about their knee and the knee anatomy. So we're gonna share with you the knee anatomy. When I say we, it's Jill, my fellow anatomy geek, and I will share this information with you. And really to help you become that expert in the hip and knee and clients with hip and knee osteoarthritis and address some of those issues you may see with your clients that have hip or knee osteoarthritis and or if they need surgery, how do you address that? Get them ready for surgery and or help them after surgery. So that's Saturday at 9 a.m. All sessions are recorded and we apply for CECs once the series is done. We'd love to have you. It's a really wonderful community of like-minded individuals. Individuals just like you who really are striving and working to make a difference and are making a difference in the lives of their clients. So the link is next to this video, wherever you're watching it. We would love to see you on Saturday morning. And if not, then the recordings are available pretty soon, right after we record it Saturday morning. Make it a great day. Keep empowering your clients. Keep being a light for your clients. And be the leader that we need in our community and in your community. And allow those clients that need you to find you. Make it a great day. This is Dr. Evan Osar with Discover IMI. Take care.